So sound design is kind of a mixed bag of stuff to talk about because it's just there's a lot there's more to sound design than you might initially think. So sound design basically boils down to sound effects and music, basically any audio, but I'm not going to include voice acting because that is kind of its own separate thing. It doesn't really fit into these as well. So when I say sound effects, I mean stuff like the sounds of swords clashing in your game, gunshots, um, but also also kind of the small stuff like footsteps in your games or you know the sound of when you move from one menu item to another. Even the small sound effects can be very important for a lot of different reasons. A lot of those things sound weird if you don't have it in, so it's very important that you have something in there that at the very least doesn't sound wrong and hopefully sounds good and satisfying for the player playing it. Yep. Or whatever feel you're going for. A game without sound effects is very, very awkward because it just doesn't really make sense. Um, and then music, you know, music ranges from ambient music to the point where it hardly even sounds like music to, you know, intense boss music that's in your face and really, really quick and active. So the three things, three ways to get to, to do sound, of, sound design. Number one, just create your own, your own sounds. So your own sound effects, your own music. This is pretty accessible for a lot of people. There's a lot of free tools to use. There's a lot of you know, tutorials you can find to make this kind of stuff. Um, second option, the much easier option, but the less, much less customizable option, is to just find music. You know, add it in from somewhere else. Find resources online that have free songs or free sound effects, all that kind of stuff. A lot of times that works really well for sound effects, for the level of games that a lot of people in this club do. So if you're looking for like a menu uh, like button sound when you click on it, that's something a lot of people have done before. There's all kinds of free uh, sound effects online that you can find for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is to have a designated sound designer uh, as a part of your team if you're working in a team. Um, and this can be like a full-time position that they are only the sound designer, or it can be, you know, this is the sound and animations designer, something like that, that you can, you can play around with that. So before we get into this, heads up, important, we're not actually going to go into how to literally create music or sounds because that is not within the scope of this meeting or within my knowledge set to like feel good about teaching that or talking about it. So that, that could be a good workshop. Yeah, but experience with that kind of stuff that could probably lead a workshop. Mm. Doesn't really work great for a 45 minute meeting. So yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna go into that necessarily, but we are gonna talk about sound sound effects and music that are good for your game, why they're good for your game, that kind of stuff. So, starting off, sound effects. First things first, why are sound effects important? So, first of all, if you have no sound effects, your game is just weird. It's just it it's alien. It doesn't sound correct. There's just no sounds when you do things. So they fill the void. They make it so that there's not nothing. Simple, but some people forget to add sound effects for certain things and it's very quickly noticeable. They also let the user know what's going on in the game, whether it be like your if you're low on health, you're you hear a sound effect letting you know, hey, you're about to die, do something about it, or uh, I think we have a good example here uh, for... That was kind of loud. Um, sorry about that. Sense of award a little bit. for opening your chest, or we also have the poison sound, so when your Pokemon's poisoned, you're, you have a, both a sound effect and a screen shake, either one is enough to let you know, hey, something's going on. You gotta do something about it. You gotta fix that. Oh God, I hit the wrong thing. Oh no. I'm trying this. It's not very easy to use this over my back. <laughs> so this effect. 
that you don't even need to know that the screen's shaking. You don't even need to notice if the screen's shaking. When you hear that noise, you've been playing the game for hours and you've never heard that noise before and suddenly you're hearing it every few steps. Even if you don't know what's going on, you immediately know something's up and then you can take a look at it and figure out what's going on. And same with the, same with the, um, the, I think this is when the puzzle's been completed sound from Legend of Zelda. You don't actually need to even see what's going on. You could close your eyes during this, and when you hear that, you know, okay, a door just opened, or I just solved something. So it gets something across. As well as sometimes it's the best indicator for a game that you don't even need something visual. You did it again. I did it again? <laughs> Don't judge me. This is hard, apparently. That noise, that's the classic Metal Gear that when you hear that, you know you just, somebody just saw you, somebody just noticed you, that you don't need to, you don't, you don't need to you see it. see the person that saw you, you just know that someone saw you. Yeah. Just based off the noise. And then finally, you know, this sounds kind of obvious, but it's always good to bring up. Your sound effects should be enjoyable. It should be satisfying. And that goes more into actually making a sound effect enjoyable for the player, which we're not necessarily going to go into here. But we are going to go into... Nope. Not, how did that happen? How did that happen, okay? I've been trying to play the sounds, and it went to the next slide. Then I tried to go to the next slide, and it played the sound. How... I'm not happy. All right. So just, so, just some general tips about putting sound effects into your game. So first things first, your sound effects should match your game. This is really important because a lot of people don't match their sound effects super well and it gives off a completely different meaning. If your character is swinging a hammer and they bring it down onto the ground, you should have a really big kaboom sound effect. You know, maybe even a screen shake, depending on how big the hammer is. If you bring it down and it makes like a thud, like not like a thud or like, like, you know, a bang, but like just a thud. It doesn't convey the same meaning. The player will think they're using a balloon hammer. They'll be surprised when it does a lot of damage. They'll be like, oh, I thought this would do just average damage just based on the sound effect. So that's where we talk about uh, sound impact. So that's sort of like the weight behind a sound. And there's a few things that go into that. So the actual volume of sounds compared to other sounds should reflect that. If your character's swinging a dagger versus swinging like a hammer, they should be different volumes. That the hammer should be a loud sound, literally loud, that you know, the waves are amplified, they're big, because it's a big sound. Whereas a dagger shouldn't be that loud, it shouldn't be as loud, at least compared to the hammer. Um, then the sound shape, so what I mean by the sound shape is, when you have a sound, I'm just gonna draw this for ease of, rather than trying to point at one of these. This, as a shape of a sound with all those goofy squigglies in there, is what a jump scare sound should look like. So this is the shape of, it looks like a wall when it starts. So it's moving left to right. So it starts out and it's kaboom, right in your face, right away. There's not buildup of the sound, it's just there, right then. So that's, and, and that's, that's for sounds that are quick, that should surprise the player, that should be very impactful. Whereas something that is smaller, something that's not supposed to you know, surprise the player, shouldn't have that. If you are making a menu, and you're making sounds for a menu, this is not a great shape for menu sounds. This is, if, you, if you're making menu sounds, and this is what it looks like, don't do that. Make it, give it like a little bit, give it like a little bit of like build up, if you're gonna have it that big in the first place so that it's not completely grating on the player's ears. Because if that's the case, it will sound horrible very quickly as the player constantly hears ding, 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 ding in their ears. They, don't, they might use a lot of menus. You don't want to do that. That's not Has anyone ever not good. opened up the CSGO menu for the first time without editing the sound effects? Because it is like right away as loud as you can possibly get in your headphones. And it's like, OK, quick, where are the sound? like options, I would need to turn this all the way down. Like you shouldn't have that for a menu. It should yep. be, it shouldn't hardly be noticeable. Yep. And the third bit is the length of the sound. So this is how long the sound actually lasts. And this just 
this just uh, is more of like an used for like echo effects that if you have a big hammer swing it should make a big sound and then should trail off as it goes whereas something small shouldn't have a long trail off because that doesn't really make much sense it's not very impactful so you'd want to have it last less of a time so matching sound impact for the actual impact of the sound of the thing that you're make is making the sound is very important for making your sound effects fit your game next you need to consider how often an effect plays I was just talking about menus if you make the sound of opening your menu loud and kind of obnoxious but your player is playing a platform a 2d platformer it's not that big of a deal if they're not going to be opening the menu a lot if they're playing a jrpg and your menu sounds are obnoxious that's like the whole gameplay is just menu sounds don't make that obnoxious so consider how often stuff is going to be played how many of you have played breath of the wild okay a lot of people how many of you know right away what the sound of opening up your map sounds like that little of the little eyeball pops up and then it shows your map that's because you use that a lot it's not necessarily an obnoxious sound but that has been ingrained in your memory I would imagine because you've opened the menu you've opened that menu a lot of times so they had to be careful to make sure that that sound was not super obnoxious because if it was you would probably stop fast traveling to certain places just to avoid having to hear that as much I would at least so and then finally don't stack too many sounds um if you were having a sound that is quick so if you are for instance shooting a gun and it's you're, you're shooting you know like a machine gun and it's rapid fire don't make your bullet sounds long so this is when we were talking about sound length because if they are long and you shoot three bullets all three of those bullet effects are going to be stacking if that's if that's how you're implementing it in your game I suppose but just consider that okay I don't know how many actions the player is going to be able to do at once make sure that your sounds won't sound really bad when they're all stacked on top of each other make sure that there's a limit or that you handle that in some way same thing goes for a game like World of Warcraft where you have a lot of stuff going on screen all at once you don't want like 50 different sounds all playing and all lasting at the second uh, you should have them short if there at all and really prioritize which ones matter and which ones can be quieted down and shortened up. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever heard of uh, how Overwatch does their sound design? Over you have? Overwatch has a really unique sound design where they actually give priorities to every single sound in the game and they adjust volumes depending on what's being played at once which is why when someone uses a voice line right next to you and nothing's going on it's very loud but if they use a voice line next to you while something else is happening you don't even basically hear it at all and that's because in that game um, the ultimates of heroes are mostly if not entirely telegraphed by the sound that is played that it's some global noise that everyone can hear in the game so it's very important that you can hear all of the sound effects that are necessary to do well in that game so they have to handle all sorts of special special ways of handling stacking up sounds to make it sound to make to make the game playable because otherwise it would just be a mess of stacked sound effects so moving into the fun part my opinion the fun part is music so same kind of question why is music important same reason first one to fill the void because if you have no music in your game it doesn't sound right now that's not to say you can't have quiet parts of your game you can have parts without without music um if anybody's played dark souls uh most of those games have no music a lot of areas of those games just have no music at all the boss fights do but they actually don't there's a lot of downtime where there's just no music but it's not bad because it sets the mood because there's other things to fill it there's you know plenty of sound effects and it works so what I here's an example of that of just setting it hopefully not too loud so this is the music that plays when you're playing Luigi's Mansion and you're outside you're outside of the mansion how many instruments do you guys hear there's only one instrument 
one instrument kind of sounds like it's in the background not very important and it's just it's just to serve ambience because it'd be weird if there was nothing so it's not like it's a and that, that game has some very good in-your-face music to people who've played it it's got some very it's got some in, the, some songs that have some a lot of instruments put into it it has great sound design but you know they don't need a big song there so it's just filling the void it's just making sure there's not nothing second thing some uh, songs can do is they can set the mood so how, what, what 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 mood does this put you in when you're playing a game this song here that is not playing are you kidding me <laughs> I swear I could oh my god it's a pretty happy song. So who wants to play Doom? <laughs> no, it's, that's not. Anywhere. This 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 song in Doom would be a downright humorous because it just wouldn't fit whatsoever. Like you're ripping a demon in half, and like it just doesn't it doesn't work. And it's setting it's setting specific it's setting a specific mood for that part of the game. There, it's supposed to be a super happy beach level on a Yoshi game, which is like the happiest game ever. So, it fits. And third, it indicates what's coming. So, to, to all the people who raised their hand when they said they've played Legend of or Breath of the Wild, you'll recognize this song right away because it'll probably make you panic a little bit. So I, I don't even need to play more than like the first three seconds of it because that song is accompanied, so for the people who don't know, There's a lot of beeping sound. Yeah, that song, that song is accompanied by a very angry machine that can one-shot you most of the way through the game with giant lasers and it can shoot you from far away. So that song starts the instant it trains its laser on you and starts targeting you. So you don't even need to hear the laser. You hear that, you immediately go into panic mode and start flipping around every which direction trying to find where the thing that sees you, where is it? So that's letting, the pl that's letting you know what's coming just through music. Just by the song change, it indicates something. This is similar to like battle music. If you've been playing Skyrim and you don't even notice an enemy near you, and then suddenly you start hearing the battle music, and then you look around and you find it's a mud crab, it's telling you that there's an enemy. In that situation, kind of misses the point because it's a mud crab, but it's still letting you know something's happening. And finally, finally, your music should be enjoyable. Again, this is something that should be obvious, but don't have bad music that is not enjoyable for you for your audience. Unless you're tr unless it's intentional, unless it's trying to set a mood that would I don't know what mood that would be, but comfortable mode. I'm just yeah. All right, let's see some eerie games where you <laughs> Yeah. So just some general tips about music. It is important not only to match the tone of your game, but to match the mood of your player. If your player is going through a very difficult section of the game that they'll have to retry a lot, you better make sure that that music sounds damn good and does not get repetitive. Because if they're gonna be listening to the same song a hundred times in a row, while getting more and more frustrated as they go, you better make sure that you've designed it so it's not going to be grating, so that it's really pleasing to listen to. Along those same lines, if you're playing a game that has, that doesn't necessarily change levels or anything, so if you're playing like Age of Empires or something, you don't want to have the music in a game like that where you're playing the same music over and over uh, be really repetitive, or you could add in all kinds of songs that you have a massive playlist. Either way works, but you just don't want to have, like, the player should never get sick of listening to a song in a game where they will have to continue to listen to it for the rest of their life, no matter how long they play the game. Yep. And that also, this also applies to like boss fights. Boss fights are a great time to put your really intense, really dramatic music because it's fit, it should fit the player's theme of, okay, here's this enemy that I have to try and you know, overcome. This is an intense part of the game. Great time to put in your intense music. Second up, you gotta know when to shut up. You gotta know when to not put 
loud music at least. You don't have to have moments with no music. That's not necessarily necessary, but you can't have that intense boss music the whole game. It will physically exhaust the player if they're constantly listening to really intense music all the time regardless of what they're doing. If you're walking on the road in Breath of the Wild and you're hearing that crazy music when you hear the Guardians instead, like even though there's nothing going on, that would get really annoying after just a few minutes of having to deal with that. Yeah, it'd be impossible to relax. Mostly because that song, that specific song just kind of immediately puts me into panic mode, but something similar to that would also just be really hard to relax with. Um, and also, at the same time, having silences in your game can be really impactful when they're in the right parts. I don't really have a specific example, I guess, off the top of my head, but does anybody have an example of where suddenly cutting out the music entirely from a game is really impactful to it? Undertale does it well. Yeah, that's that's a great example. That uh, what is it? The when you fight Sans, like when you when you walk into that hallway, like it just gets super quiet as you're walking through. That it makes that that specific part very noticeable because it's one of the areas that has no music. Uh, yeah. Anytime the music cuts out when you walk up to a door in a horror game. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That when it gets quiet, you start listening really carefully. And then that's when the jump scare happens and then, you know, your ears explode and you freak out. So. Or there isn't a jump scare, but you still force the player to anticipate that jump scare and throw them off. Yep. So, don't be too distracting or too ambient. What I mean by this is when you're in a boss fight, your music should not, basically in any situation, your music should always be noticeable, but it should always be less noticeable than whatever the player should be focusing on. You should always keep this music level underneath this uh, basically gameplay level. And that's what I mean by backboard. You can have your music follow closely with it, that you get into a boss fight, so you know they need to pay real close attention and it's intense, so you can raise the music up there. And you can bring it down to where you know you're, it's real ambient, there's a lot of peaceful stuff going on, and you should have your music under that. But very rarely should you ever put your music above that, that the music is more in your face than what's going on. You should, it should always be a good backdrop or something to support the game, but it shouldn't be the focus of it unless your game's built around that. There's obviously many, you know, um, exceptions to that. If you've got a music-based game, then yeah, your music should be really noticeable. Um, if you're playing Crypt of the Necrodancer, you know, you, the song should be really noticeable. The gameplay's based around it. That makes sense. So. Mm -hmm. So, finally, consider what sound effects are going to be playing with your music. Don't put the best music of your game in a part that's gonna have a lot of sound effects drowning it out because the player won't hear it. So, just kind of a general tip, just not necessarily don't put music in places or don't put sound effects in places, but just understand what might be playing. Consider all of the possibilities of what the player might be hearing to make sure that it's not gonna sound like garbage. Along that lines, like if you're playing a first person shooter, you probably don't want much, if any, music because there's a lot of audio cues going around and you don't want to distract them from that kind of thing. But if you're playing a platformer or something, music can be very impactful and enhance the mood a lot. And you have a lot more freedom because there aren't a lot of sound effects going on uh, in many platformers or puzzle games or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're gonna move into what I like to call guess that jam. So basically, basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play a song. And I'm gonna play a song that I, at least I think is particularly atmospheric. And we're just gonna go around and throw ideas out of what it sounds like it would be used in. So this could be you know, a desert level or a water level of something, or it could be you know, a horror game, like that kind of stuff that we're just gonna talk about how we feel like this music might go, and then I'll say, okay, it's actually from a game. I don't know, it's any game. So, <laughs> you don't want to give you spoilers. I mean, yeah, it's going to be from a game, but. So, 
I'm going to pull it up on this screen so none of you can see what I'm doing. Mwahaha. So, first things first, what do you think of? And to anybody, you'll see, never mind. I'll explain it in a sec. So, first one. And if you recognize the game, don't, don't, don't shout it out. Anybody want to start throwing around what they think this could fit in? Probably oh, somewhere underwater. Mm hmm. Underwater. Space. Space works too. Maybe something haunted. Haunted. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. So does anybody uh, go ahead? I think it also uh, plays around with a lot of the like other in-game sound effects, the in sound of things. It's usually used like when it's underwater if you're almost out of air that it will remind you listen for these pinging sounds because they're important. Mm -hmm. So does anybody know what game it's from? Banjo-Tooie? Yes, it's from Banjo-Tooie. And it is in the underwater section, but literally every single answer you guys gave me, this is kind of funny, fits. Because it's an underwater theme, there is a UFO in part of it, so it does fit space. There is a deep sea part that is pretty spooky and kind of unsettling, so it fits kind of like the horror theme. And like even even when you said the the water things the reason that that doesn't come to be a problem is because it's the only level where you can breathe underwater so you don't have to worry about those so you don't even have to worry about the water sounds actually like stacking or, or being distracting so yeah pretty much exactly what what you guys said and it is kind of ethereal because it's specifically Atlantis that you're finding this ruins and crazy you know interesting place so yeah you guys yeah you nailed that one Jeez. <laughs> So, song number two. Again, if you know the game, don't throw it out yet. Expect a lot of people would know this game. Hmm? Snow. Snow, yep. Introduction stage. Mansion. Mansion, yep. Sort of spooky. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. quite, but yeah. A, a light kind of spooky. Children's spooky. Yeah, like something like that. Yeah. It does kind of have the magical elements to it. That's what I felt like. Hang on, I swear this is making sense. I'm making it so I can control in here. Yeah. yeah. But it's like it feels like low, shenanigans are important. So, so first of all, uh, with the hat back there, um, do you know what game this is from? Okay, that's why you said intro stage. I wasn't sure if you were <laughs> just saying that. So yeah, it's from Super Mario Odyssey. This is the Hat Kingdom. So the first, the first place you're thrown, and it's kind of like a Tim Burton esque Twilight. It's always, it's always nighttime. There's always a big moon out, and it's all these hat ghosts and stuff flying around. So it does. It does fit like a kind of spooky theme, but not like male uh, malevolent. Malevolent. Malicious, thank you. That's totally the word I was going for. Uh, <laughs> malevolent. God. Um, it's, not, it's not evil, but it is kind of spooky and, you know, in the background. Magical. So this one, this one I expect most people should pretty much immediately guess. So we'll see if we even need to play much of it. <laughs> yeah, la laugh, but it fits. It fits super well. So does anybody, first of all, does anybody not know what game this, game this is from? Okay, can you tell me what you think it might be? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't worry about anybody else. Just. Sounds kind of like, like a shot, kind of. Okay. 
Like it's not like it's not like super fast paced, but it's meant to be like. Yep. It does kind of sound like it could. It does kind of sound like it could be playing at a shop. So this is from Super Mario 64. This is the Dire Dire Docks, the water, basically the water levels. Um, and it really does fit. I I swear I kind of half expected it to start doing the ding 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 ding. -ding of being low on health when you're underwater because that's just kind of become part of that song for me but yeah it's it's pretty much cookie cutter this is what a water level kind of sounds like with this going up and down and all over the place or whatever that yep. is. but I could I, I could actually definitely hear it as like a shop theme it definitely sounds like it relax something with this chill. is that like there's a lot of visuals in this level that are different. You're underwater, you're swimming. Uh, that that kind of gives feeling to the music in a way. Mm -hmm. That uh, initially, without any visuals, uh, it doesn't. Well, when you have the visuals, it feels more like ripples happening in the water. Mm -hmm. Kind of context in it that it could be happening underwater. Yeah. Without the visuals. Yeah. There's a, at least one example in my list that. So that is takes on a very different meaning depending on uh, the the actual situation it's in. So here's another one. This one you get to explain. I'd say it sounds kind of Western. Because I also don't know the context of, of what this is used in, so. For the whistle, it sounds kind of like a, like a post-mission possible, sun's going down, orange shoes in the sky. Yeah, <laughs> definitely does. We'll never see each other again. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, partner. <laughs> As they go off in the sunset, exactly. Yeah, the Western whistle comes in, it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very western, but it's still very sunset. Yeah. Like I could see this playing like I had two characters standing watching the sunset as the credits roll. Mm. Yeah. I could definitely see it as like a credit thing, like exactly set up like that. That kind of sounds like the death. Very visual. As like a as like a sort of like a bittersweet thing. Yeah. As like a you know, sorry, sorry, sorry you're dead, but you know, you had a good run or something. <laughs> <laughs> Not a great example. We succeeded because of you. For me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Nate, what is the song from? Or does anybody know the game, first of all? What is it? RimWorld. Yes, it's from RimWorld. What is, the, what is the context of this game? Uh, so this and other themes, uh, songs made like this, are the background of the entirety of the game. The game is kind of base building, uh, more uh, survival-ish. You are crash landed on almost a uh, deserted part of a planet, very much Western in the ways that uh, I don't know, the music more so plays out this Western theme, but it's very... Well, it's, pro uh, it's probably... Uh, it's like Frontier. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, like a new Frontier, you know, exploring the unknown, kind of yeah. capturing that, it's, uh, it's that stuff. Huh? That's what that did to do with the game was. Yeah, it's called RimWorld Base Building. You, it's science fiction, but also kind of Western in a way that you drop into one location, supposed to survive. Uh, also, it's very rhythmic, almost like a clock, because you'll get raided at some point. So after the first or second playthrough, it's kind of a race for yourself. Yeah, whoever said bittersweet, I think that really fits too, because it's a game where a lot of times your characters will die, and you'll just have to suck it up and deal with it and keep trekking on. So I think a lot of you guys hit that or like got that out of the song too, even though you have no clue what the game is, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 
So, next one. I don't think anybody will get this song, to be honest, but we'll see. I'd be surprised. It is it does give a very Stranger Things vibe, yes. Definitely It kinda does it kinda does sound like that. It's like like if there was a song to Beat Saber, it would be this. Well, maybe not anymore. It sounds, sounds like a menu screen or like a danger sound. Mm -hmm. You're not fighting a boss, but there's enemies around. It's almost kinda like a chase. Mm. Yeah. It definitely has unique spontaneous moments to it. So something with maybe random encounters or stuff like that. It feels like you have a mission and you have to like, you're running to go complete it right now. Or maybe you're being chased or something like, something's going on and you gotta do it. Time to everybody watch that. The ship's about to blow up or something. Watch what? Like the, like the wolf, like the wolf seasons of MacGyver. Oh, MacGyver. <laughs> <laughs> Does it sound like that? It's like, uh, like every episode, he like defeated the bomb, and that's the music. That's yeah, the music. exactly. Yeah. Bomb defusing sounds like it. Yeah. Sounds so like you're playing hide and seek with someone that wants to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. So does anybody know what game that's from? Game of, you have also some really strong Mass Effect vibes. Yeah, definitely. Is it Transistor? No. Theory? This is making me sad. Nobody's heard of this. It's from a game called Deep Rock Galactic, um, where you basically go uh, mining in a planet, and it's like a sci-fi. But this is the sound of when uh, mission control tells you that there's a swarm on the way, and the aliens start popping out of the walls and start coming to attack you, and you have to try and defend yourself. So a lot of you guys hit that with you know something coming at you, sort of like a danger sound, sort of something building of you're getting chased and something's coming after you. So. You guys all nailed that just just from the song, and no one's <laughs> apparently heard of it. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> too, not too few people know that reference now, Nate. So here's this one. <laughs> I imagine a decent few of you will probably recognize this, so. Maybe not. I would think so. Anybody? Start throwing stuff out? Definitely. Okay, okay, not at all what it is, but you know, I get, all right. It's just that first person. Well, in what sense? Like first person? Yeah, like, like just the same Minecraft, like, that doesn't really narrow it down too much like, to me. Just kind of like Minecraft. Resource collection. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could definitely see that, like the ambience. Yeah, the vibe is just going to like a really just like large dungeon with like fewer to no enemies. It's just like a really tall melody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like you come across something like in space, and it's sort of mysterious, but you want to find out what's in there. It's like curiosity, spooky, but you're also intrigued. Yeah. There's definitely curiosity there. It's not like it's not an awful sort of mysterious. Yeah. So does anybody know what game this is from? Celeste. Y yes, this is from Celeste. So this is the second level when you wake up in this dream world where there's all, all these, uh, so it's a 2D platformer for the people that don't know, and there's these blocks that have stars on them that are really mysterious and strange and when you use them, or when you dash into them, you travel through them in a really weird pattern. And it's kind of an otherworldly weird level that is in this dream world that just kind of is really mysterious and you, is cur you're curious about a lot of stuff. 
So you guys nailed that. Shut up. You guys nailed that pretty well, uh, especially the space theme. The saying uh, feels like space. Saying it feels like kind of like a dungeon with few enemies. That it's kind of feels abandoned, like just that's not much in it. Pretty much what it is. Yeah. So you guys nailed it. So this one, I need to skip to the right part. Anybody want to start throwing stuff? That's like the final boss, the final level. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It feels like you're about to complete your mission. Like whatever you set out to do, it feels like you're doing the very last steps to complete. Yeah. Have you two played the game, by the way? <laughs> the two Poochies? <laughs> okay. Just, <laughs> just, just curious. Not to say you're right or anything. <laughs> not to say, not to say you nailed it or anything. <laughs> What else are you guys getting from? Even if it's just pointing out the obvious. Like, you know, it's upbeat. It's upbeat to this really. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Isn't that necessarily what happens in the game? I don't know. But the way it begins, it feels like your character just like got up from like being shot down and then like gets up for one last fight. You haven't played this. <laughs> this is this is bizarre. Okay, okay, okay. So it's from Celeste again. I gave you the old double feature. Um, and this song, this song. Okay, this song happens after you just fell a really long way down the mountain that you're trying to climb, and this is you getting up and finally getting to the summit. So it's the final level of the game, getting to the summit from where you just fell down. So that was. You did it. <laughs> you got it. So that's, it's kind of a feeling of triumph of you're finally getting up to this goal and this is the final push and you got to get to the top. Very upbeat. It kind of feels like the music way of saying you can do it is how I've seen a lot of people put it. So really fits, really gets the point across. Here's, here's one that's not traditional. I made it turn it up higher. Yeah, definitely cave. It's like near place where there's just like a lot of rot around. Yeah, Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the theme of Kmart. They play this in the commercials. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Right, <It's> Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. It sure does. <laughs> yeah, that like that like gooey stuff from Spider-Man Three. That like Venom stuff. Yeah, sounds yeah. kind of like slimy. So, does anybody recognize what that's from? PowerPoint. No. Some horror game. It's Hollow. No. It's Hollow Knight. Yes. This is uh, Hollow, <laughs> Hollow Knight has some really upbeat, cool music. And that is the area of the game known as Deep Nest that is all dark and almost impossible to see more than like two feet in front of you and is filled with bugs that crawl out of the ground and ceiling and attack you and filled with bugs that when they die, the parasite inside of them then grows out and keeps attacking you. I mean, it's a, it's a horrifying, terrible place. But the use of just like that uh, violin I don't know what to call it, but going back and forth really quickly there, if you hear it, if you, anybody heard that. Um, 
as well as literally having the sounds of little bug, bugs skittering, skittering around really nails that point of, yeah, this is, this is pretty spooky, that this is full of actual bugs and is a not very nice looking place, yeah. I think the musical term for it going back and forth is a trill. Tremolo. What? Tremolo. 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 Tremolo is two notes. Tremolo. Tremolo is going back and forth. Oh. I, thought it was, okay. I know neither, so you know you you guys are both going over my head. I got I got no idea. You probably know more than I do. One note: you're saying that it sounds like other bugs are scrounging around. You played this. Do the other bugs that are attacking you make other noises, or does it sound like just one weird massive bug? They they do make noises that you can distinguish, but it's kind of meant to blend them in because it's it's meant to feel like you're only fighting one of a huge writhing mass that is anywhere close to coming out and attacking you. So. Yep. All right, here's one that... Uh, I see one like there's a hundred someplace else. Here's one that I, I'm sure most of you will recognize. So it might, it might not go, it might not work that great, but we'll see. Also gotta turn it down okay. quickly. Circus level? Yep, circus. Okay, circus level. You sort of all that clowns are creepy vibe. Kind of, yeah. It's got kind of a unsettling yeah, thing, I guess. Extremely slightly off key. Yep. <laughs> oh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of like old and out of tune, out of touch almost. Mm -hmm. I think I know what this is. Well. I'm sure most people know what it is, just or will know, should know what it is, but maybe just don't recognize it right away. Ghosts. It does kind of sound like yeah. Yeah. So th that that song is also used in this level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's used in a haunted house level. It's from Super Mario 64, and it's Big Boo's uh, merry-go-round in this underground area. But if you just hear the merry-go-round song, it's not necessarily that creepy. If you put that song in an actually happy-looking merry-go-round with no scary stuff, you probably wouldn't think too much about the fact that it's scary. It probably would just go to the back of your head. It is a little bit off key, which does kind of, you know, sell it. But it's the fact that it's used in a level that's really scary, that suddenly you come across that and it's just plain old unsettling. That it's not spooky like the level music, like the main level music, and it's not happy like the merry-go-round music is trying to convey. It's just kind of a weird, like, just the con I don't want to go anywhere near where that music is coming from, because there's going to be clowns and it's going to be terrifying. <laughs> there are no clowns, thank God. There's a piano though, so that you know, it's pretty awful. But that's kind of that's kind of using music that's not necessarily scary, but by pairing it, by putting it in a certain location and pairing it with other music, it kind of gives a completely new feeling out of it. So here's another one that's kind of along the same theme, I guess, in a way. Okay. This down. This one's kind of on the nose because, you know. So who knows what this is from? I mean, yeah, it should be the same people who knew what the other one was from a while ago. Um, so yeah, this is from Banjo Tooie, and this is a boss in the middle of a rundown circus, like <laughs> carnival place, with horrible safety standards, I gotta say. Um, that was actually shut down for its state safety uh, standards. And you fight a giant inflatable boss inside the big top, and this is the noise of it going crazy as stuff starts flying and it's kind of chaotic as you're trying to get a handle on the situation. So literally, yes, it gets, gets that point across <laughs> right away that, yeah, it's circus music, but it does not sound friendly. It sounds like something is attacking you. 
So that double tap just gives you that boss feel because it's going so fast and you gotta keep up with everything. Mm -hmm. So last one. give like a like a medieval feel. Hmm? Yeah. I definitely I definitely hear that. There's something big. It's not a big feature, just a big open space, just something big. It's like it's trying to convey a lot. Definitely. So does anybody know what game this is from? Yeah. This is from Civ 5. This is from yeah. Civ 5. Yeah. I think you guys really hit it on the point with the awe. I think they're really trying to go for that uh, that grand feel. You're creating up this giant new empire alongside all these other uh, civilizations, and it, it has that background noise, so it's not going to really get in your way, but it's building you up, making you feel like you're creating something aw awesome. Like, mm -hmm. I also thought it was it was very fitting that you said medieval and you said spaceship, because it's a game about spanning, yeah. you know, times of having your thing go from medieval basically times to building. You can build a spaceship, right? That's like a, the science. That's one of the pictures. Yeah. 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 No. Okay. I didn't mention it, but it did feel sort of like something not exactly historical, but pseudo historical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I'm <laughs> trying to invoke history without actually being from a certain place in time. Well, I, I thought this song did a really good job because it felt like they were trying to put music that matched different times all in one. Like, you got like the flute, which makes you feel like all the way back, and you have like the medieval sounds, like your grand medieval, but you also have your like stuff that sounds almost like, like the thump of like industry going on in the background. I, I think it does a good job of capturing all that. It's very, that was very quotable. Thump of history, or thump of industry going on. You know? It's good. I like that. Do they actually change up the music based off of, like, what, I think they have ages? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. It's one of those things where you like the music, but you just keep playing and you don't really notice the music in the background. It, it does a really good job of being good. It keeps you playing. Uh, like if you turn the music off, I guarantee you will play that game for less time. But at the same time, like you don't really remember like any particular part of the music because it's that slow pace of uh, yeah. So what we wanted to do with this was show that a good good a good song used in video games you can identify what kind of part of a game it's gonna be in just from the sound of it, that it fits so well that you can almost see a game from the music, not hear the music from the game, that it's almost reversed of how well it fits. That, that's your goal, basically, so. That was it, uh, reminders. Um, uh, we have a workshop this week on, on some pixel art tips and tricks, how to get better at you know making pixel art. Um, as usual, if you want to show your ideas, let us know. We'll give you some time at the beginning. And a reminder to pay dues earlier than later, especially if you want a t-shirt, to make sure that you can get the size that you wanted. So we, uh, if, if people are interested, we can go through some more. I have a like five or seven, some, some more on this list if people want to stick around. But this is a great opportunity if you've been dying to get out of here, to get out of here. So go forth, make games, be awesome. Thanks, guys. See you next week or this weekend, hopefully, so.